Mike Sukan, he's the president and CEO of the Michigan Festivals and Events. We left you talking about fun on t- in 2021. We all need a lot of fun in 2021. How are you going to make that happen? Well, we're, we're kicking off as we do every year. This is our uh, 28th year of having our annual convention. Uh, unfortunately, it's our first year is doing it as a uh, virtual event. And so uh, there's some challenges with that. Uh, it's going to be November 6th and 7th, and the whole theme is bringing back the fun in 2021. Uh, some of the messages that we're going to be talking about, some of the breakout sessions are going to be a little different this year because of, obviously, the COVID. So we're going to be talking about how to handle the those kinds of situations. Also, some of the uh, things that are going on in society, how to handle some of those things. So it's going to be... Uh, it, it, it's not just going to be a pep rally. It's going to be a uh, preparation to get everybody on the same page so that uh, we can have safe events for uh, 2021. And um, we're looking forward to it. And you mentioned uh, uh, how the kids are doing. My wife's a school teacher. And yes, that's a bit of a challenge too. So uh, kudos if you only have one problem in a week. That's great news. <laughs> We'll take it, and I will say uh, to your to your wife and to all the teachers out there, bless our hearts, they're doing an amazing job trying to navigate this new world as we all are. So tell us a little bit about this virtual plat- ground, uh, platform, and I do think that this may be the way of the future as well because from a business standpoint, it is a great way to actually be able to include more employees while reducing cost as well. I I cringe when I say it because everybody looks at me as if I've got three eyes, but there are some benefits that have come out of this COVID. Um, and the, the benefits are we've had to rethink and we've had to become creative. And I think maybe we were complacent with the way we did things because it worked. And um, the Zoom meetings, uh, you know, people get frustrated with those Zoom meetings, but there was a lot of meetings that I missed because I couldn't afford the time to drive an hour one way to a meeting that lasted an hour and then another hour to drive back. And so three hours of my day are shot where now I can have three consecutive Zoom meetings. Yes, I know it's kind of crazy to do that, but I'm able to meet with people that I would not have been able to meet with before. And uh, we've been doing that a lot with our membership having Zoom meetings, bringing in keynote speakers. And that was something that was not available before because we're a statewide organization. And to have somebody from the Upper Peninsula and Benton Harbor and Detroit and Traverse City all being on the same Zoom call at the same time, and then as soon as you hang up, you're on another meeting with somebody else, that's... I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a, I think that's a benefit that we didn't have before, or we had it, we just didn't utilize it. Um, and, and that's kind of where we're going with our convention. Instead of having uh, everybody booking a room at a hotel or a conference center, booking all these rooms for breakout sessions, and then having the same breakout session happen three different times so that people could could see it, and maybe you only had 15 different breakouts. We've got 30 breakouts this year. And as you get your registration, that gives you access to participate in the breakout sessions live, but also because you've got the registrations, you can go back and you can pick up something that you missed. So you could actually see all 30 breakout sessions. Um, you can, you're gonna be able to go through a trade show just like you would before, but instead of walking, you're gonna go surfing through the internet, going from one booth to the other, and you can interact privately without somebody else leaning over your shoulder, having a conversation with the person that's got that product or service that you wanted to talk about. Um, the same thing is true for our uh, entertainment. It's, it's probably the hardest part, because I love inter- live entertainment, and not being in the, um, in the banquet hall with the band playing is, you know, there's no if, answer, buts about it. We're going to miss that, but the bands are still going to play. They're just going to be virtual. They're going to be in a recording studio and they're going to play. And then you'll be able to interact with that band manager for available dates and uh, booking information. So it's, 
it's going to be different. You know, the one thing that we can't have is we can't have the food and beverage. We cannot have the hospitality suites, which are all things that people like to, you know, sometimes you think that's where the best deals are made or in the hallways of a convention, not necessarily in the, uh, in the breakout room. So, um, until we can figure out how to zoom that, I guess we'll just have to live with the challenges. Yeah, and there is something to be said about when you go to the conferences, the organic relationships that grow out of those spur of the moment greetings and meetings that you you do with strangers. Um, but on the other side, the positive part of this, I think, is you can focus in on the areas that are of interest that you really need to learn from when you go to these conferences because there were a lot of times you go to a conference and you'd meet people but then oh we're going to get together or contact me and you never hear from them again this allows you to keep track of people but also to focus into the areas of which you are actually there to learn from so maybe going forward it's going to be a hybrid model but i do think this is going to be something that's going to stick around from here on out what do you think about that Oh, I agree with you. I think that uh, it is going to be something that's going to be around um, in, in a hybrid manner. I think that's also an opportunity to do a convention in the future where you may be in one location. It, I mean, you actually may be in multiple locations. Um, you know, it's kind of like the old uh, uh, New Year's Eve party where you, Okay, we're going to go see so-and-so and they're playing on stage in this stage here in this city and then you're going to flip over here to this one and there's opportunities to be able to to pull on um, multiple um, multiple locations and be able to get people to still have that interaction it's also been a benefit for us in getting the breakout session speakers and uh, our keynote speakers because they didn't have to travel either and you know, we've got a great lineup of um, breakout sessions or uh, our keynote speakers. We've got Dave Lorenz from Pure Michigan that's going to be uh, talking about the, uh, the Pure Michigan campaign and how that's the funding of that this coming year and what the impact is going to be on tourism in the state of Michigan, especially coming out on, as, we, as we navigate our way out of COVID. And then we've got the guys from the, under the radar talking about, you know, they're visiting around the state and it's the, the pivoting that they've had to do in their TV shows from going from festival to festival to doing things virtually. And then uh, kind of the dark side, but yet something that we need to definitely be conscious of. We've got uh, Genesee County Sheriff Chris Swanson is going to be talking about human trafficking because he's a part of the festival and event family and something that he does personally on his own. And he sees that our festivals and our events, unfortunately, are breeding grounds for predators. So to train all of us on what to look for to protect our vulnerable citizens, our children, uh, I think is key. And to be able to get these people available with their busy schedules, you know, all they got to do is sit down in front of a computer for an hour or so and uh, do a, uh, a talk and an interview one-on-one -on -one with people you know it's it's going to be special it's not going to be you we're going to miss that interaction you know the the person that you only see once a year that you like to shake hands with or give a hug to or or uh hey let's go have a a, a beverage together and talk about what's going on in your life and and catching up with what's happening with your family that's going to be missing and that's uh and, that, and that's tough but um there's a lot of benefit to it also if, from the educational point of view i think it's going to be a lot better than it would be um in person will it replace in, in person i hope not because i think we all need that 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 personal interaction and you talk about the fun and you know it is about the fun but it's it's more than just the fun because festivals and events are a billion dollar industry in the state of michigan it's it's a billion dollars of economic impact now it happens in small town usa it, you know you've got a festival coming into town the small town businesses that are on main street that are getting traffic that they wouldn't normally have the restaurants that are now getting extra people uh, 
sitting at their tables or the bars that have more people sitting at their bar stools, the gift shops that have more traffic going through there. Those are all the ancillaries. And then you put in the, the charitable portion of that where you got the Lions Club that's because the festival came to town, they've now got their, their, uh, their, their wagon there that they're serving concession or the Rotary Club that's doing this or the Boy Scouts or whatever that are doing things that because of the festival and the event, it's serious economic impact. And it's, it's something that has been missing. Your previous talk, uh, caller was talking about the Woodward Dream Cruise. Again, Woodward Dream Cruise or Back to the Bricks in Flint, the, the, the charitable dollars that were not able to be generated because we couldn't have those events this year because of COVID, um, that money's gone. You know, Hopefully the stock market will come back and everybody's 401k will be will be strong again next year. But the money that the charities lost this year, they're gone. So it's important that we have these festivals and events. It's important to a lot of different facets of, of our society. Mike Sukant with us. He is the president and CEO of the Michigan Festivals and Events Association, joining us on the Oakland County Megacast. So with that in mind, at this point in time, you don't know what's going to happen in 2021 with COVID-19 and in the next several months, even with COVID-19. So as these festivals and events are preparing for next year, what are what is your organization consulting with them about and, and what are they considering to be able to as much as, po- as is possible as with what we know now and, what, what, and with as much as may be possible in the next several months with the developments against COVID-19? What, what is the discussion right now about what can be done to bring back some of the usual fun that we're used to seeing at these festivals and events in 2021 while keeping some level of safety from COVID-19 as this pandemic seems to be in it for the long haul? Well, I think that you have to plan, still plan your events. Um, if, you, if you need to postpone it, so, uh, you can postpone it. If for some reason you have to cancel it, you, you go ahead and you cancel it. But if you don't plan it, uh, it won't happen. So you need to proceed forward and you need to check out the CDC guidelines as to how to proceed safely and always work on trying to do things better. But you do still have to plan them because if you don't plan it, it's a guarantee that it won't happen. So um, always always look for the silver lining because if you're not prepared for it, you're going to miss an opportunity. Well, thank you for sharing that. And we are all waiting for the silver lining and the return of our festivals and our fairs and our events because it is so much a part of our community. And definitely that was where the fun is. And we can't wait for the fun to return in 2021. Mike Sukant with us, the president and CEO of Michigan Festivals and Events. Thank you so much for being with us on the Megacast. Thank you. Have a great day.